Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Rustam. In my previous video lecture, which was uploaded on to YouTube channel, I discussed uh, contrastive analysis and then error analysis. So, uh, whenever we are learning a second language, and uh, we usually uh, make mistakes or errors. So, uh, there are two views about these errors. Uh, one of the uh, school, uh, one of the schools th uh, thinks that these errors are bound to happen, and uh, we should not worry about them because uh, when we are <coughs> learning a second language, <coughs> there is always a stage uh, when we uh, make. Uh, mistakes and errors and this stage is known as interlanguage and uh, uh, we should uh, analyze these errors and we should try to uh, find out uh, like uh, what can be the cause of these errors so then we should work on these causes and we should try to remove them this is known as error analysis uh, Pitt Coder says that uh, uh, these errors are a sign to progress. It means that the learner is trying to uh, hypothesize about the language. Our learners, a learner is le uh, constructing a new language. So, now uh, there is important discussion that uh, what is the influence of uh, first language regarding the development of second language, L2. Okay. Now let me uh, uh, give you examples from Urdu and English. Okay, uh, one uh, hypothesis is uh, this is known as a contrastive analysis hypothesis. Uh, it says that if the systems of L1 and L2 they are similar with each other, then uh, there will be a positive transfer. Positive transfer will mean that L1 will be influencing positively the development of second language acquisition. And if there is, uh, you know, a dissimilarity or differences between the two languages, systems of two languages, then the development of uh, that particular area of L2 will be slowed down. It doesn't mean that that particular area will not be developed it will be developed but it may take a bit longer now here is an example of a development of negation uh, let's suppose that uh, our first language is urdu okay like urdu or hindu speakers they are learning english okay now uh, 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 let's say uh, in in english uh, as you can see uh, i have given few examples that uh, english uses uh, uh, see, I am not a doctor, so not is a negative uh, negation marker, okay, and it comes after the verb, okay, uh, particularly the operator. Operator means helping verb or auxiliary verb, primary auxiliaries, and then we have uh, this do and can. So uh, now again, they are helping verbs, and uh, not is you. Uh, used after these helping words so we can say english uses post verbal negation okay now let's uh, take the example of urdu or hindko okay main doctor nahi hu now you can see nahi has been placed before this verb this is an urdu uh, uh, verb that is helping verb and uh, nahi has been placed before it May save nahi khata. As you can see, uh, this is verb and uh, nahi is a negative marker and it has been placed before the uh, this verb. So we can say Urdu uses pre-verbal negation. Now English uses post-verbal uh, negation and Urdu uses pre-verbal negation. Now if someone is Urdu speaker and he has already acquired uh, Urdu as L1, now he or she is learning English as L2. So, what will be the influence of L1 on L2? So, this particular area of negation, it will take time because uh, an Urdu learner uh, will be a bit uh, in difficulty 
while making such sentences okay they he or she may make few errors like uh an urdu uh you know learner may 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 utter such words uh instead of saying i am not a doctor i am not a doctor he may say i not am a doctor i not do like this why uh, such errors are happening uh, in the discourse or in the spoken discourse or in the writing it is because of uh, the influence of l1 so l1 is here not facilitating the uh, uh, learning of l2 rather it is uh, a neg it is a case of negative transfer okay and uh, uh, it doesn't mean that this uh, uh, stage will uh, stay longer the l2 learner uh, will overcome it and he or she will be able to find out gradually that what is the difference between the two systems and he or she will be able to pronounce like uh, uh, i am not a doctor i am not a doctor but initially there will be uh, uh, the progress will be slowed down and this is the cross uh, linguistic influence of l1 and l2 so the hypothesis says that the items which uh, the items of l2 which are uh, there in l1 so it will be easy to learn and the items which are not there in l1 so it they will be difficult to learn okay now it, see the another example this interlanguage let me explain it here this interlanguage uh, stage will be over after some time but l2 development in the area of negation may be slowed may be slowed to due to incongruity of both the systems incongruity means dissimilarity or differences so that here in this particular area of negation uh, both urdu uh, and english they differ from each other so in the area of uh, negation while an urdu uh, l1 speaker urdu l1 speaker is learning english so here uh, the learning of negation of english will be slowed down so there will be a, uh, there will be initial confusion and later on uh, the l2 learner that is uh, english as a foreign language learner or english as a second language learner will overcome this area now here is another example uh, you know there is a difference between article system of two languages urdu does not have urdu or hindi they do not have any article system that is a n and the or the while english has an article system so it means there is a difference so now this difference is going to be reflected in the development of l2 article system it means that while we are learning article system of english a n and the we will take longer time uh, in this area because both the languages do not have the same system okay let me give you example urdu or hindi speakers do do not have articles articles system okay when when learning english <coughs> they will make errors <coughs> so this is an hypothesis so here is an example urdu sentence you can see ye nayi gaadi hai uh, in this uh, you can see there is no article article uh, used but uh, english uh, will not have this structure like this is new car this is new car this is incorrect in english why because english uses an article system and english speaker says uh, english speaker say that this is a new car so when an urdu speaker or hindi speaker uh, utters this sentence like this is new car and teacher says your sentence contains an error he the learner uh, you know is troubled he thinks that what is the what is wrong with the sentence because he or she is imposing urdu norms of speech because in urdu there is no article system so he just uh, translates urdu uh, version into english 
as you can see there are four words in urdu sentence ye nayi gaadi hai this is new car but english tutor says that this sentence is incorrect there is error in it and learner is puzzled then he is uh, made to realize that english uses article system and there is lack of article so you need to use an article that is a indefinite article a should be inserted in the sentence so this area of article learning of english will be troublesome for urdu learners or hindko learners but how longer just for uh, you know some time after this we will be able to understand this area and we will uh, develop our second language in this area as well so if we are making uh, errors uh, so these errors are known as interlanguage errors interlanguage error interlanguage mean we are transitioning from l1 to l2 and in between there is a stage where such errors are happening and these are errors are uh, happening due to many reasons one of the reason is the uh interference or uh, facilitation of l1 interference mean negative transfer of l1 and uh, uh, you know facilitation mean positive transfer of l1 so l1 is uh, influencing uh, the development of l2 so the uh, and how do we know uh, about it that we are analyzing these errors and we after analysis of uh, these errors we just uh, uh, you know come out with this conclusion that there must be some reason there must be some cause of these errors and then the cause is identified as the influence of l1 okay and uh, and one of the hypotheses says that if there is uh, if two languages are similar in structural uh, you know uh in structure then uh development of l2 will be uh, faster uh, and uh, and uh, as a whole or uh, sometime there are differences between two languages in certain areas okay okay and uh, the areas where they differ from each other these areas of l2 will be developed a bit late in the uh, acquisition process now here is another interesting example of development of grammatical gender grammatical gender so you know we have gender like we say female and male uh, masculine and feminine but these are biological genders sometimes some languages use grammatical gender urdu and hindko they are languages which use uh, grammatical gender while in while english does not use any grammatical gender let me give you an example from hindko in hindko uh, basta and gaadi these two uh, nouns uh, are considered as masculine and feminine how do we know now see this example nila this is an adjective adjectival uh, you know word or phrase so nila and neeli so these two uh, grammatical uh, genders indicate that basta is a masculine and gaadi is feminine how do we know because we never say neeli basta neeli basta or we never say neela gaadi neela gaadi neela gaadi because we uh, we know that gaadi is uh, feminine uh, in in urdu we treat it as a feminine feminine noun okay uh you know you can say a uh, a uh, female gender that's why our adjective is uh, neeli neeli gaadi neeli aankhe N- but when uh, when we use uh, uh, when we use an adjective with basta we use neela basta it mean urdu uses uh, nouns in urdu okay nouns in urdu nouns in urdu uh have uh, you know grammatical gender okay uh, l- let me give you an example mera kamra mera kamra uh meri baithik meri baithik now we never say mera baithik it means urdu is sensitive with these uh, adjectival phrases 
now english is not as uh, you know gender uh, english does not use uh, grammatical gender you see bag and car they are two nouns in english and we use the same uh, uh, adjective blue so there is no change in blue as you can say b l u e blue the same word but in english we use nila as you can say nila and nili so there are inf inflections at the end here we use alif uh, as an inflectional marker okay and here we use j choti j to indicate that uh, uh, car is uh, uh, female you you can say and bag is male so in english we say blue bag and blue car there is no change okay but in urdu we say nila and nili so urdu is sensitive uh, as far as grammatical gender is concerned so now an urdu uh, speaker or even hindko speaker in hindko we also have uh, grammatical gender let me give you some example let's say uh, sona is a hindko word sona phul sona phul phul is treated as male okay uh, soni soni uh, shakal or soni uh, let's say kitab now kitab is treated as female that's why we never say sona kitab we say soni kitab so it means hindko uses uh, grammatical gender okay so hindko nouns whenever we uh, uh, use uh, in hindko nouns are categorized uh, either masculine nouns or feminine nouns on the basis gr grammar okay not uh, on the basis uh, basis of uh, biological genes okay so but english is insensitive to these uh, grammatical genders so what is the influence now an urdu l1 speaker urdu l1 speaker or hindko l1 speaker when he or she is learning english so there will be a bit challenge for such learners as far as l2 is uh, concerned development of l2 is concerned uh, because uh, like while using blue uh, bag and blue uh, let's say car the urdu speaker will be uh, puzzled because in urdu he uses nila and nili okay nila bag nili car but in english it is the same so here there will be initial confusion and uh, there may be few errors and later on uh, this these errors will be overcome so this is known as interlanguage stage and uh, every learner of a foreign language or second language will have a special set of uh, interlanguage maybe german speakers will have their own uh, uh, interlanguage arabic speakers will will be having their own interlanguage so what is interlanguage interlanguage means that uh, when uh, an l1 speaker is learning l2 there is a intermediary uh, stage known as interlanguage where the learner is making errors but these errors uh, are one of the causes of these errors may be the influence of l1 okay and uh, this is known as cross linguistics influences so this stage interlanguage stage is bound to happen in every language wherever there are two languages coming cross so there will be an intermediate uh, stage known as interlanguage 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 mean a stage between two languages interlanguage and this interlanguage is uh you know uh, different from every learner even in one language let's say two hindko speakers who are learning l2 so they will be having different interlanguages interlanguage mean there they may be making or committing different errors and this may be cross linguistics uh, globally like a japanese speaker learning english will be having his or her own interlanguage unique interlanguage okay 
and and uh, arabic english uh, and arabic l2 learner will be having his or her own interlanguage interlanguage mean a special language known as learner's language a language having lot of errors so these errors uh, should not be taken uh, as you know what should i say that uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a theory like behavioristic theory which says that uh, this these should be disdained or we should be looking down upon these errors rather larry slinker uh, and pit coder says that uh, these errors should be taken uh, with magnanimity of heart and they should be tolerated and they should be over soon actually they attribute these errors to the influence of l1 this influence may be positive uh, or this may be negative <coughs> if the influence is positive <coughs> that then l2 development will be facilitated and it will be faster and it is a negative transfer from l1 in, in case of differences of two languages then again uh, l2 will be developed but uh, a bit uh, slower so i think uh, they are very good uh, they have given a very good analysis and uh, they have try to teach us that interlanguage is bound to happen and uh, there will always be a stage while we are transitioning from l1 to l2 it should be considered as a continuum that is we are moving from l1 to l2 and in between there is a in this continuum continuum uh, there may be a stage where we are making some errors and just we need to analyze these errors and we should find out the causes and then we should work on those causes okay uh, and uh, we don't need to worry about these uh, errors very very much because they are going to be over very soon so this was the topic uh, that is error analysis and interlanguage okay so hope uh, i have tried to warm you up towards the topic so you need to explore this topic further and uh, you can go to google okay and uh, type in the search bar interlanguage interlanguage <coughs> you can say interlanguage is a uh, sla theory in a way second language acquisition theory a second language learning theory why i say it is a theory uh, because uh, uh, while we are learning a second language there are many approaches towards uh, learning a second language one of the approaches is interactionism second one is mentalism third one is behaviorism now this is also an approach uh, cuz uh, we are worried about errors which we make in writing and speech so now this theory says that we should not be very much uh, puzzled and worried about these errors okay they are bound to happen and they will be overcome Uh, over the period of time and there is another theory contrastive analysis contrastive analysis contrastive analysis actually uh, now error analysis ea error analysis uses actual data from uh, spoken uh, or written corpora okay like whenever uh, learners speak or write and we take up uh, samples from their written uh, their writing and from their speech and then we analyze those errors and then we find out what is the cause of this these errors while contrastive analysis uh, predicts after studying the systems of two languages and f- it finds the dissimilarities between two languages uh, like structure dissimilarities and incongruities and then predicts that whether l2 uh, will be facilitated or l2 will be impeded so it uh actually predicts while ea uh, does not predict it it actually it uh, analyzes the actual data so this is the difference between contrastive analysis and error analysis and error, error analysis is closely related with interlanguage okay error analysis is clo- closely related with interlanguage interlanguage because interlanguage is full of errors and we analyze those errors and then we become uh, uh, tolerant and we say that uh, it's okay and we try to find out these errors and uh, so pit coder is an authority on error analysis 
and uh, he says these errors should be taken uh, you know with magnanimity of heart and uh, rather we should uh, appreciate the learner that he or she is constructing a new language uh, while transitioning from L1 to L2 in between he is uh, constructing a new language and he is hypothesizing about uh, different systems of L2 that's why uh, uh, the learners uh, like uh, when they are uh, you might have seen that uh, while making plural uh, our uh, learners make uh, they add an s like children children children's so if a learner is adding an s uh, as an inflection plural inflection so there is uh, you know uh, 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 the uh, linguist or the analyst uh, you know becomes interested that why this s has been ad added in the actual speech so uh, it means that the learner is making hypotheses about uh, this is known as over generalization okay the learner is uh, has not yet uh, understood uh, that uh, uh, there is already a plural marker added so he is over generalizing that all nouns in english will have an s as a plural marker so that's why he or she adds an s with every word but later on he or she will be able to know that uh, uh, every noun does not take an s as a plural marker so errors uh, may be uh, cause because of over generalization of L2 over generalization of L2 okay systems or it may be caused uh, under the influence of L1 L1 influence okay and there may be some other reasons like uh, faulty teaching errors in the speech and errors of learners may have penetrated because of faulty uh, written text or faulty speech, a uh, faulty teaching method of the teachers, and uh, it may be due to overgeneralization, or it may be the influence of L1. So now you need to uh, Google or uh, go to YouTube and uh, search these topics like error analysis, error analysis, error analysis, or interlanguage, interlanguage. So you will have further clarity about these. And uh, there are research papers available on this website, academia, academia. Dot, edu, edu. This is very important website. You just need to visit it, and then first of all, sign up. Sign up means you have to create an account. After creating an account, then you can go into the search bar and type interlanguage or error analysis. There will be a good deal of research papers available just download them read them and then you will be able to clarify this topic further there is another uh, you know website OATD OATD open access to uh, theses and dissertations here you can find uh, big uh, you know uh, publications theses a thesis is a, a bigger uh, piece of uh, report so it may contain 100 pages or 70 to 80 pages and uh, you can even read these uh, published theses then you can visit google scholar okay this is another specific search engine google scholar google scholar and here you can type uh, the word interlanguage or uh, error analysis and you will find some web pages and uh, you can read them so this is uh, the last topic on our course or our syllabus and uh, i have done two videos on it and if you have got any questions you can come to the whatsapp group and post your queries there thank you very much